Hey guys, this is a lesson on rational expressions and limits as x goes to infinity. So we're going to be looking at things that look kind of like this and just talking about strategies about how to actually solve this. So for this particular video, I think it would be best if you pause and try the examples when you are prompted. And also there are free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. So just to be clear, we are only looking at rational expressions in this video. So if that's not what you're interested in, I have other videos that you might want to look up. So the first thing that we want to talk about is just kind of a helpful fact. So let's think about this. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. So if you've never thought about this before, so you could just think about what happens as x gets bigger and bigger. So if I think about like 1 half, 1 third, 1 tenth, 1 one hundredth, 1, I don't know, let's, let's just go crazy here. Let's say 1 one millionth. So as x gets bigger and bigger, the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller. And if you just like were to try plugging these into a calculator, you're, you're like the bigger your number gets, the closer this whole thing is going to get to zero. So the helpful fact here is that this limit equals zero. OK, so this is really helpful for us um, when we talk about rational expressions. And so when it specifically comes to rational expressions, there's a trick that we, we use with limits, which is that you want to divide by the highest power of x. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a couple of examples in a moment. And just the last thing I kind of want to state here before we get started is that rational expressions can take many different forms. So I just want you to take a look at this before we get too far into this. So these two examples here, these are probably what people would think of when I say rational expressions. So I have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom. But the techniques that I'm talking about in the video, they don't have to just look like this. So they can kind of be like rational expressions, like here's a rational expression to the seventh power. I'm still going to consider this to be a rational expression, okay? Or if I want to make this even crazier looking, so now I've, I've actually got this, this technically wouldn't maybe fall into like a, the true definition of a rational expression, and yet like I've got rational rational exponents, like I, I can still actually manipulate this using the same technique. So this this can actually be extended um, to a couple different ideas and sometimes people don't realize that when they work with this particular technique. So I just wanted to point that out before we get started. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of work with all problems like this um, in, in this video. Okay, so let's start with kind of the basic examples here. So there's really three different things that can happen with just your basic rational expressions. So in this case, what I want you to notice about this is that the term of highest degree is in the denominator. So what you want to do in this case, so you want to divide um, everything by the highest power of x. So in this, this case, I want to divide everything by x squared. So let me just write that out. And I'm going to be nice and visual about this. So give me a second to write all of that out. Okay, so you can see by looking at this now, I just went through every single term and divided each part by x squared. And so now what you basically want to do is reduce this where you can. So in this case, you've got x over x squared, so just reduce all that. So um, maybe you want to pause the video here and do that on your own and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, and so here's the limit that I'm left with. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you, notice that I'm, I'm kind of keeping this limit notation going on the left here. Super important when you're working with limits, we haven't taken the limit yet, so you have to include the limit notation. If, if not, that's the type of thing that a lot of teachers are going to take off for, me included. <laughs> so, all right, so as I, as I look at this now, so this is where I actually go back and I rely on that helpful fact. So, basically, if you have x in the denominator and x is going to infinity, that means that the whole thing is going to be going to zero. So that's really helpful then as I look at all the different pieces of this, because for instance, this piece right here, 4 over x, this is going to go to 0. So let me just mark that. That's going to go to 0. And if 4 over x is going to go to 0, then 3 over x squared is certainly also going to go to 0. So this also will go to 0. And both of these parts here, these are both also going to 0. So the only thing that's not going to 0 is this 1 here, right? So maybe I'll, I'll mark that in another color. So the, the limit of any constant is just the constant itself, so that one's going to 1. So now we're going to, we, we've kind of noted what's going to happen here. So what is the actual limit? What is this the whole thing equal? So this whole thing equals 0 over 1, so this just equals 0. Now, if you think back to pre-calculus days, depending on how you were taught this in pre-calculus, 
this actually makes sense too. Um, so if you, th this actually is your, your um, horizontal asymptote and it equals zero. And this is what happens when the degree in the bottom is one more than the degree on the top or is more than the degree on the top. So this actually kind of pans out with stuff that we've seen in the past, depending on the class you were in. Okay, so the first case was the case where the, the highest degree was in the bottom. Now, the highest degree in this one, so I've got 5x squared plus 3x plus 1 and 7x squared plus 5x minus 4. Now the highest degree is actually on the top and the bottom, right? So if I want to divide everything by the highest degree, then in this case I need to divide everything by x squared. So maybe you want to pause here now and actually just do that and kind of sort all that out. I'm going to go ahead and, and do that on my end um, and then let's, let's meet up. Okay, so I worked out everything using the same technique from before, so here's what I was left with. And so now as I kind of evaluate all of this, so the five and the seven, so these are really, these are constants, so these are just gonna stay as is. So I'm actually just gonna put a little green box around this to remember that, because the rest of this, three over x, one over x squared, five over x, four over x squared, all of those still kind of rely on that handy little fact. So all of those things are gonna go to zero. So the answer in this case is gonna be five, over seven. And so if you think about this, why does this make sense? This would be the horizontal asymptote five over seven for this function. And you might remember from pre-calc, if the degree of the top and the bottom was the same, then you just take the leading coefficients. And so this is actually the, the calculus that backs that up. So a lot of times when this is taught in pre-calc, it's just stated as like this mystery fact. But in calculus, we can actually explain why that is. Okay, so now for this, this last case here, and this is one that, that can be a little bit tricky. So in this case, I have that the term of highest degree is on top. So there's two different ways that we can kind of think through this. So first we can just think about this kind of conceptually. So if you think about it, the, the top being of higher degree really means that this x squared is going to kind of dominate and power over everything, and so if you think about that then, if that's if that's what's on top, then this is really gonna, the whole thing's gonna end up going to really negative infinity. So that's, that's actually what kind of happens with this. And if you were to try to divide by the term of highest degree, so now let's just take a look at that. So let's divide everything by x squared. So once again, uh, if you wanna pause here and kind of set that up and then I'll, I'll meet you there, I'll, I'll work this out too. Okay, so here's where we're at. So think about now what happens as x goes to negative infinity. So once again, we have this constant six here, um, but the rest of this, so this, this is gonna go right here, this part's gonna go to zero, and this part's also gonna go to zero, the whole bottom. So take a look at what actually you get when you evaluate the limit. You get six over zero. And anytime you get something, let me draw a nicer looking zero, anytime you get something over zero, this is a problem with limits, right? This, this does not work, it cannot be undefined. So this tells you that something is up with this problem. And so this would be the result that you would get if you're just kind of mindlessly using the trick of, oh, I'm gonna just divide by the highest power. And so now you've really gotta say, okay, now is this gonna go to positive infinity or negative infinity? Now, in just kind of thinking about this, um, you can probably just reason that uh, maybe reason your way into this, but I do want to show you the like technical way of kind of figuring this out. So let me clear some space. And basically what you're going to do now is you're going to use um, long division, polynomial long division to figure out what's going to be the oblique asymptote. So when you have the degree is higher on top than on bottom, you get an oblique asymptote. So I have a whole video where I actually break all of this down, but so I'm just gonna kind of run through this very quickly in this video. If you're looking for a longer explanation, I recommend you take a look at my um, other video where I break down kind of a full review of this. So I'm going to write this out. So I've got x plus two here, six x squared and three x and one. Okay, so you really ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to get to six x squared? So this is 6x, and then you get 6x squared plus 12x, and I basically need to just subtract all of that off. So I took this times this, and I'm subtracting this off. 
So if I do that subtraction, so the 6x squared drop out, then I get 3x minus 12x, so this is negative 9x plus 1, and so then I'll put negative 9 here, this will be negative 9x minus 18, and then I can finish the subtraction, so in this case I'll actually get 19. Now, for an oblique asymptote, the fact that this has a remainder it doesn't, doesn't really matter, that's like not something you, you care about. The thing that you're interested in here is just this part. So this part here, this is the oblique asymptote. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to clear some space. So write down anything that you might need um, but before I erase it. So like I said, this is our oblique asymptote. And so really then, this whole thing, this limit, so let's see, I'll, I'll write it out like this. This limit here can be rewritten as 6x minus 9, and then I guess we'll, we'll throw the remainder in here just for, for funsies. <laughs> okay, so here's technically what this equals. This equals this. These two things are one and the same. So now if I'm ev evaluating the limit as x goes to neg negative infinity, it's pretty clear to see here what's happening. This, so this minus 9 is going to just kind of drown out. This isn't going to really do much, right? Because if you're, when you talk about infinity, like a small finite number compared to infinity doesn't really matter. This part here, this part here is going to go to 0 because you have an x in the denominator. So really the thing that you're interested in is what is happening as the, the, to the limit as x goes to negative infinity. This whole thing then is just going to end up going to negative infinity. And so like I said, you might think of this as this is like negative infinity minus 9 plus 0. So this, first of all, this would be incorrect to, to write out, but I'm, I'm just doing this as a thought exercise. So this doesn't make sense because infinity kind of trumps everything, right? So in this case, when I when I see these two numbers, they're, they're nonsensical, so that's why I don't include them. Once you know that your answer is going to equal either positive infinity or negative infinity, any other numbers don't really matter. They're all going to get drowned out by the infinity. And you know that this one's going to go to negative infinity because this is negative infinity here. And so 6 times something negative is going to end up being negative. So the entirety of the answer would be, be negative. Now, just, just one other thing to kind of mention here. So what if I had something like the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 6x? So this would actually equal positive infinity, right? Because then this would be something negative times something negative, which would give you something positive. So you can kind of play around with signs like that. So just a, a quick note on kind of making you more confident with working with infinity. Okay, so now I want to extend this idea to those other examples that I was just showing you. And I have three more examples here that we're going to run through. Okay, so let's start with this one. So this one is um, a square root over an entire rational expression. So this is really no different than if I think of this like this, right? So if I think of this with a, a rational exponent. And really any exponent that falls on the outside like this, so this could be rational or a whole number or whatever, this is not really going to have much bearing on what happens to your limit. So your limit's going to be whatever it is, and then you kind of evaluate this at the end. So this, is, this has to do with limit laws. Um, and so limit laws kind of apply here. So if I just focus on the inside of this part here then, then I know that I need to divide everything by x squared. And now just for the purpose of kind of keeping this video a little bit shorter, I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by x squared and I'll just show you what the result of that is. You might want to pause here and do that as well and try to see if you can finish this. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I, and I divided everything by x squared and this, was, this is what I would be left with. And so Ignore the one half for a moment. Just think about what's happening to the inside piece. So we know that this part and this part, these are both going to go to zero. And then the rest of this is just going to leave you with one third. So what this really equals then is one third to the one half. And now from here, it's just a matter of what format you need your final answer in. Um, some teachers might take 1 over the square root of 3, others might want you to rationalize that. So if you do that, then you have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, and then you get the square root of 3 over 3, so it just depends on your teacher. Um, if you're one of my students, um, I'm not really too concerned, this, this would be fine, fine with me, but I think that 
sometimes our homework system might actually require this. So just a heads up. Okay, so this one is still the same idea, even though we're working with rational exponents, it's still gonna be the same idea. You still wanna divide by the highest power. So in this case, the highest power that you see here would be x squared. So you might wanna multiply, or sorry, divide everything by x squared. Go ahead and do that and I'll, I'll meet you up at that point. Okay, so I just wanna pause here for a moment in case you're stuck. So I divided everything by x squared, but I kind of reinterpreted x squared to be what I needed it to be when I was working with these rational exponents. So instead of writing x squared here, I wrote x to the 6 thirds, which is the same thing, just kind of helps me to, to think through the math a little bit easier. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, so now as I'm working through this, I still really get the same thing as I did in an earlier example. So the whole top part is going to zero, and then the bottom, this is going to zero, but this will go to one. So at the end of the day, this is really zero over one, so the, the entire limit will just be zero. So there's really nothing special about having those rational exponents, um, except for now you just have to kind of think through the fractions. Okay, so now for this last one. This one tends to be kind of a, a tricky one. So you have to just take a moment to really think about the, the dominating term in this case. And you might be thinking, oh, it's x squared. But the thing to notice about the x squared is that the x squared is actually being covered by a square root. So this looks like it's dominating, but after you take the square root of something being squared, that technically just equals x itself, right? So notice that I'm, I'm just considering how these two powers kind of play together. And by powers, I mean x squared and the square root. How do those two things kind of uh, play out with one another? So I have to consider that without the, the plus three just to figure out, again, thinking about dominating term. So with that in mind, if I, if I take this whole picture into account, then really the highest power term here is just x. So I'm going to divide everything by x, but I have to kind of change this for the denominator. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so notice how I've kind of constructed this. So it looks like I divided by different things, but they're actually equivalent, right? The square root of x squared is just equal to x, but by manipulating it like this, it makes it so that I can actually kind of force this into this square root. So now I can start to kind of simplify this, and I'm gonna do this in more steps than I normally would, but let me write this out. Okay, and so now you can fully see how that x squared gets pushed onto, under the square root. When you have the same roots, then you're allowed to, to actually do the division like this. So now I can finish simplifying all of this too. Okay, and so now I think you can actually see what's, what's going on here, and then you can very easily figure out the rest of this, this answer. So three over x as x goes to infinity, this is gonna go to zero, as is three over x squared. This will also go to zero. So the only thing that you're left with then is this will be one over the square root of one, which is just equal to one. So that's the trick with that type of problem. And so that wraps it up for this particular video. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And I do have extra example videos if you're interested in checking them out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you next time.